marijuana sector. Here's our conversation with Vic Neufeld. Vic, let's focus on the sector here. It's been a wild ride for a lot of people. A lot of people have made a lot of money. Some people got in at the wrong time, but the, the sector's rolled over to a degree now, and it seems as if people are saying, what's next? What's coming? So at what stage are we at in this, in this burgeoning sector, do you think? Um, I need to dissect the landscape between medical and rec. Medical is here today, has been for almost three years, and rec is coming July of 2018. So on the medical front, it has evolved from a fledgling industry with uh, not really knowing who's scripting and what doc and uh, what's a patient going to use and how they're going to use it to where it is today. The Woodstock stigma, I think, has almost all evaporated, if, if not for the most part. <laughs> what's that Woodstock stigma? Well, the old pod head, you know, uh, marijuana for uh, getting high and let's have a party. It's now evolved to uh, whether it's patient evidence or certain levels of science being brought to the table where there's more evidence of, of true self-medication using medical cannabis. I'm trying to not to use the word marijuana anymore because cannabis is, is truly a mother nature, an alternate plant source treatment for a myriad of, of chronic ailments. And, and that's taken the journey about three years to really uh, educate patients, doctors, media, clinics, and that's where the LPs from day one to now uh, have really moved the needle, and in, in a very powerful way, I may add. And would you say that your main differentiator is the fact that, that you're, you use greenhouses and you're low cost? Is that, is that still the, the main thing that, that makes you stand out? Well, I, I think I'd first want to talk about really the, the Afria DNA. Um, my background, 21 years as CEO of Jamison Vitamins and the science that uh, was really part of our quality story there and how we gained the trust and loyalty of consumers, the Canadians across the country, what I brought to Afria. Um, you can grow uh, indoor in a greenhouse. Uh, you can grow the big, best, spongiest buds uh, for the connoisseur. But at the end of the day, it's got to be matched with quality. Quality just not in the growing, but the testing to make sure there are no pesticides you've used or they've not been introduced into your growing cycle. The insecticides, how to ward off those, uh, those bad things that can be uh, subject to a crop failure. We brought quality to the table and that began our journey. Now, made it up with that, my two co-founder partners, Coley Cacciavlani and John Servini, they brought the agricultural part, the, uh, the, the GMPs as best as, as one can identify for growing in a greenhouse with an agricultural vision to it. That's important because from day one, we continued to refine how a cannabis plant is grown in a greenhouse. And with the end result that based on our earnings release in our fourth quarter, we are the lowest cost producer because we have just been able to use Mother Nature at her best in a greenhouse in Leamington, Ontario. So your cost per gram came down in the quarter quite substantially, and you also think that the sector should be standardized in that area. A lot of companies use different kinds of, and you're smiling because I know you've, you've got a, a bit of an oh, issue with this. I've gone to the exchange, uh, I've gone to PwC, our auditors, et cetera. It's just, it's just not right. Um, I used to be a chartered accountant, a, a partner at Ernst & Young, so my training, my first career, so to speak, before Jameis and Vitamins, um, I'm disciplined in terms of the debits and the credits. And whatever touches a product cost-wise uh, before you sell it should be embedded in cost goods sold. Um, so there are a lot of costs that are properly contained in, in many publicly listed licensed producers. But when you eliminate QA and QC costs, indirect labor, indirect overhead, and throw it below the line, below gross profit, not in cost goods sold, that has a, a, a positive impact on lowering your cost per gram. Everybody wants to get close to my cost in a greenhouse. They're, they're not capable of doing it indoor. So they, they're using um, arguments or interpretations of accounting policies. Quarter after quarter, I'm looking at saying, it's not right. Their, their margins are so low that they're not capturing the sound bite cash cost per gram. So what we decided to do this quarter is use their definition. So the 
all the, the cash cost per our usual definition is a dollar eleven, a huge reduction from Q3 and a continued, and it will go lower. But if I looked at what others are doing in their definition and and replicating it, we're at seventy nine cents a gram cash cost. That is unheard of. So anybody that wants to tell you that they can buy from Uruguay at fifty cents and shipping and all that, God love them for it. If you do it what we're doing, if you have the greenhouse technology, the processes, the techniques, the 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 uh, mindset of how to grow agriculture in a greenhouse, you can replicate what I have in Leamington. But at the end of the day, enough was enough. So we came out with what we called our cost and other competitors' costs. All right, fair enough. So still with the quarter, EBITDA was up 181%, revenue 142. These are blow it out of the park uh, numbers or knock it out of the park numbers. So how'd you manage that? Well, a um, number of quarters ago, all we were looking to do is hit singles, maybe the odd double. Uh, I like to use a, a Blue Jays expression, uh, we just hit a home run. Uh, the, the quarter was spectacular. Um, I think I've seen some bloggers now call it a stellar quarter. A number of reasons. Uh, one, we've been able to increase our harvests. Again, little growing technique changes, uh, tweaks to improve either the quality, the density of the bud, the potency of the bud, or just pure weight volume. We've been able to do this. Why? Because we have growers in a greenhouse that just know how to maximize yields uh, without sacrificing anything else. Uh, second of all, Mother Nature in this quarter was at her finest. Uh, she cooperated, quite frankly. We, we far exceeded our, harvest, our target harvest um, because the environment was right. Q3, if I could talk about that quickly, yep. uh, our costs went up versus Q2. Why? Because Mother Nature went away. In Jan and February, uh, we, we, she was just not cooperative in terms of uh, the, the intensity of light, uh, the angle of light, the number of sunlight hours. Um, so we used more uh, lighting, uh, artificial lighting, and uh, with the result, harvests were lower. But that was our only out of three years in this journey. That was the only time where she was uh, um, not quite as cooperative as she should be. All right. Um, there was a net loss uh, in, the, in the quarter. That was because of investments. And, and some are questioning uh, what's Afria doing with their investments? Why are they buying and selling Cannibal Medical, for example? So uh, explain that. Yep. And, and did you continue to, are you going to continue to, to uh, make those kinds of investments? I've long been a, an investor. I know what not to do and what to do. So no, the, uh, the Afria funding is absolutely nothing to do with speculation, nothing to do with waiting for a capital bounce in a stock price. Uh, the Canabo, back to your example, was our fourth reach out in various investments mm -hmm. that I've explained. That is strictly patient acquisition. Uh, there were 7,500 patients in a study um, that uh, has commenced and bringing forward certain um, below our expectations, but still bringing patients to us. And that's how licensed producers grow. Uh, whether it's doctor detailing strategy or in our case right to the influencer called clinics and Cannibal is a thriving growing and still is today a platform for us. So that investment unfortunately because of accounting rules mark to market every quarter end has to be uh, recalibrated. But to your other point we sold and then bought. Um, yeah we, um, we are babes in the wood. We sold when we were in a black blackout period. Uh, we just didn't realize it and within 24 hours, uh, we re re remedied the situation. So then we had to go back in market to buy the, I think, 500,000 shares that we sold. Uh, it, it, uh, yeah, that was a misstep on our behalf, but we remedied it right away. Okay, well, there's the explanation. Let's talk about um, your very ambitious growth plans. You're in phase two, you're planning three and four. Uh, I heard you say you're, you, you know, the uh, soil's being dug up for those phases as well. And so by uh, next year, you want to have a million square feet of capacity, is that right? And, and, and tell us about uh, uh, that plan. Is it on track? Uh, how much money are you spending? And what stage are we at now? Now we're getting to some really exciting stuff <laughs> here. No, truly, it's, it's, uh, if my two co-founder partners, Coley and John, were here, uh, trust me, they'd be glowing and grinning from ear to ear. Let me give you an understanding of where we are today. So part two has now been approved by Health Canada, and we've got full crop rotation, our first harvest out of that was last week. So right away, 
uh, we've we've uh, gained a step on the on the march of, of of getting more harvest, and that was very critical for us to open up the valve to go and now seek out more more clinics. Uh, which, as a footnote, since that uh, five weeks ago, uh, opening the valve by my professional outreach team, we've already signed up 11 more clinics, and we have 20 that are in progress. So, without capacity growth, we couldn't access more patient growth. So that's where we're at now. And today, based on some other um, improvements in, in growing techniques, uh, the capacity of that now is 9,000 kilos. Um, four months ago, I was out there talking, that was about seven to 7,500 keys. Again, these enhancements that I'm referring to have now brought further yields, which drives costs down even further. Part three, uh, posts are going up as we speak, probably by the end of this uh, early next week they're done. Um, then the glass goes up and then the foot and the, the flooring, et cetera, et cetera. We are fully comfortable with saying that by no November of this year, part three will be completed. Um, that is about a $25 million CapEx, uh, budget approved, funded, money in the bank. Um, then we wait for Health Canada. That takes us from 100,000 feet of greenhouse grow to 300,000 feet of greenhouse grow, so incrementally 200,000. And that will take my 9,000 key annual harvest to about 30,000. That number used to be 22,000. Again, because of all these other enhancements, improvements, we're very comfortable moving the uh, needle higher in terms of our, our, our target capacity. That's 30,000 keys. November, if we give Health Canada a few months to get to Leamington, site approvals, give me four months from seed to sale, probably late May, uh, near the end of fiscal 2018, before July of 2018, uh, we will be uh, in full crop rotation with uh, production of about 30,000 keys annually. Part four, uh, we are very, very close to completing our land leveling. You have to understand, to level that many acres, uh, level meaning it's got to be surveyed exact, uh, takes time. Um, I think the stubs go in followed by posts. I would say within a month from now, part four, even before part three is completed, part four is beginning, has begun. Our whole retention ponds have been dug already. Uh, it's a massive uh, uh, water, water management system. Um, we're, we're pouring uh, footings and building our water towers now already and our CO2 towers. That's all for part four. We uh, were contemplating, not contemplating, we've got engineering and footings going in for our, our cogen because we're building our own power plant uh, necessary to, to power right. uh, one million square feet of greenhouse. Mm -hmm. So we are fully expecting a year from now, if you and I were chatting, a year from now part four will have been completed. That's roughly rec time, recreational introduction, but now I need four more months from sea to sail. So we will be We'll be available to participate in the rec journey uh, with my 30,000 annual keys at the end of part three, uh, but the real growth moving to over 100,000 keys will only happen until part four is done, Health Canada approved, and then give me the four months of seed to sale. Now, uh, all funded, by the way. Yeah, you're it's right. All money in the bank. You've got how much in the bank right now? Uh, you're in 167 million. Okay. A lot of institutional investors, investors have, have kept the marijuana sector at arm's length and stocks at arm's length, but based on your expansion plan, based on your numbers from your last quarter, are you starting to get some phone calls from, and are you talking to institutional shareholders who are now saying, they're on the TSX, this all looks legit, they're making money, I should buy this stock? I just left two of them this morning. <laughs> your question couldn't have been a better lob ball to <laughs> me than, than even a scripted. My, my point is this, um, we have had very uh, well-seasoned, uh, professional institutional since day one. Um, again, I won't mention names on your show, I wish I could. Uh, but recently, back to your point, more and more are saying, listen, the, the train has left. And even though there was lots of ups and downs, euphoria, it's like a roller coaster, now fatigue in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. uh, I think what's happening today in the market with Afria and my results and how I'm communicating these are sustainable and continue to grow uh, forward positively. I think more and more bigger institutions, the, the, the mainstays, so to speak, uh, are and will continue to now make calls. They, uh, they've missed some of the boat, 
I mean, you could have bought me at a dollar a share and, right. and uh, before today, uh, five twenty and six bucks today, whatever. Um, they want to be participant. We're on the big board, so we're not in the composite, but if anybody is looking at the weighting factor, they can't ignore this space. And there's only a few of us on the big board um, to, to look at and consider. Uh, my quarterly, my year-end results, I think, are, are really going to prove who they should be buying. Now, you've said that uh, Afria is a builder and not a buyer. We saw Canopy by Metrum. Are you sticking to your guns with that? You're not looking to consolidate? There's no need to? You can just grow organically? Simple answer, I am not interested in any acquisitions in the Canadian space to the extent they are indoor box growers, as we call them. They will hurt my cost structure, plain and simple. I want to reflect back again on our quarterlies and my cash cost, whether it's my definition or others. It is, it is almost impossible in an indoor box to replicate my cost structures. When you use Mother Nature at her best, here's an example. What I spend in one year for hydro, an indoor, publicly listed, we've done their forensics, spend in one month. I'm one twelfth of the hydroelectrical utility costs. Why? I use Mother Nature. We have less lights, our intensity is our less, we use them less often, they have to air condition in the summer months, we use venting. When you add up those costs, why would I want an indoor grow, point one? Point two, we are now, I think we ended up the quarter at about 32% of revenue mix is oil. It's gaining two to three percent every Every, quarter, every month. Eventually, and I've heard some LPs are up to 60% oil sales already. Eventually, I'm going to be probably at about a 50-50 balance if it's medical. Under recreational, depending on the infused products that Health Canada allows, whether it's e-pens or topicals, sublinguals, etc., when, when those line extensions are introduced, it's even more of a driver for oil. So, an indoor guy an indoor box guy will tell you, Vic cannot grow this beautiful bud. You see how spongy it is, see how purple that purple cush is, um, that, that experience on the draw, check marks. They, they have more controlled environment, absolutely. Cost them a lot more to get that. But if, if, if you understand where our vision is of where the market is trending toward, but with a real impact under recreational oil, oil, oil. So now it's about your extraction method. Is it super critical CO2 like we have, or is it ethanol, butane? I mean, we could argue and debate the pros and cons all day long. Back to the, the concept is you're gonna juice, you're gonna oil extract the bud. It doesn't matter, therefore. So therefore, why would I wanna spend three times more to produce a bud that I'm gonna juice versus me when the, the uniqueness or the advantage is they're speaking to the connoisseur user of a dried bud. I don't. I have capacity of funding, money in the bank. I know I could raise more if I had to. I got uh, credit unions that are knocking my door down for more lending if I ever need it. I got 52 acres that I'm going to be building entirely the whole footprint. Uh, One million feet of greenhouse, 350,000 feet of infrastructure, new offices, parking lot, uh, I, um, uh, housing for our offshore labor that we're going to be requiring to bring in. All of this is on a campus. A year ago, I bought 200 acres about three miles north of me on my Leamington campus, 200 acres. That is for future expansions if and when needed. I'd like to say when, not if, but let me just leave it at that. So I have the ability to expand in Leamington, Ontario. It cost me $55 a square foot under ACMPR to build a greenhouse. An indoor guy is $250 to $350 a square foot to build a box. Even CapEx is, is, is in my side. Sorry, a a AC ACMPR? That's the uh, medical rule, Health Canada rules, uh, right. as defined today. Okay. Yeah. Uh, lastly, some investors might be watching this and saying, this guy tells a good story. This the, the, the company sounds fantastic, it's growing, 
Um, but they may want to try to poke holes in the story. They can't be all blue skies. What, what are the challenges? What are the obstacles? It's got to be something. Well, um, recreational. Um, what keeps me up at night? Uh, Anne McClellan, uh, when the task force presented their 80-some recos, she used this reference several times. Diversity of cultivator. Today under medical, very clear. You must be a licensed producer to grow, distribute, etc. Oil extract. What does she mean by diversity of cultivator? I can only assume some of those craft growers that are underground today, not part of ACMPR, not an LP, not Health Canada sanctioned, therefore illegal, but they, they Health Canada, public safety, justice, they know that there's a, a, a huge demand that's going to come above ground. That's the desire, that's the objective. The LPs today cannot service those needs. That's why there's a lot of fast tracking going on. But again, they're all relatively small LPs starting off. Uh, there's a two or three of my competitors that have got big vision plans. Good for them. We need it. Absolutely. I know what Aurora is doing and I know what uh, Med Relief is doing. That's all necessary. I, I welcome that. But it's still not going to be enough if a lot of the underground consumers want to become truly legal. Most Canadians are lawful minded. Uh, they'll want to buy from whether it's online in Ontario or an LCBO in Ontario or else Liquor Control Board in New Brunswick, wherever the provinces are going to allow legal sales for rec. They need product. What I believe, therefore, a concern of mine, these craft growers, these, you know, five-acre farms, indoor, outdoor, they're huge. Uh, whether north of Toronto or Okanagan or Fraser Valley, they're everywhere. Um, but they need to come into our part of the journey. They need to, I'm not saying under ACMPR, but they got to come very close to the costs I've incurred, the quality, um, all of the testing that I ha I'm subject to under ACMPR rules. If those are also applicable under recreational, how do you now bridge these guys? And a lot of them, I've met a number of them, and they're good guys, mm -hmm. most of them. Um, they're, they're really, uh, farmers at heart but with a business environment wrapped around them they want to be part but the cost of getting up moving over and dropping into this set of regs which are unknown today that's the other part that keeps me up tell me what those rules are before I get too far in part four because if, if recreational supply chain the cultivation of, of, uh, of cannabis slash marijuana for the rec world if it's if it's lesser regs lesser costs of securitization, et cetera, et cetera, tell me before I build my part four, because now I will down, not downsize the square footage, but reduce a lot of CapEx. Right. I, I didn't want to get too much into the, the government stuff, because we could talk about that all day. But you, you, no, no, it's okay. But you did, you took us to uh, an area of concern for, for you. So, so that was great. Uh, I think you only pivoted maybe once in this whole thing. Uh, I'm joking. Okay. Uh, very, very direct. To the point, we really enjoyed it. I, I, as, as we were talking, I thought, you know, th this is going to be a special. It's going to be like a half-hour show with uh, with Vic Newfeld from Afria. So we uh, thank you for coming. In.